who whatever their thoughts ideas etc share then uh, if you are the experienced operational principal uh, person you know you leave them to to yeah figure out how it is done you take your feedback you might want to cost correct huh? but he gives you a lot of the space and which is why i think if you look at the last 7 8 years of uh, indian foreign policy we are able to move i, I mean i i give you uh, why operation ganga i'll give you operation dost right mm. now yeah turkey you know, yes turkey uh, the earthquake uh, happened i mean uh, i think literally you know in a very very short time uh, you know uh, he wanted to know what are our thoughts i kind of sent in our thoughts i very quickly consulted uh, you know my own people in my own ministry and uh, literally within a few minutes we were told okay you got the go now you know go to, you know talk to ndrf uh, whatever yeah, tell in the 48 hours if yeah. i'm not mistaken that they were already there we were less less than less 48 than 48 less, okay. less than 48 hours Yeah, you know, um, you were talking about delegation and about getting uh, things in order quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we've seen videos of the Cabinet Committee on Security (CCS) meetings. You know, it looks like this is the creme de la creme of the cabinet. Everybody getting together, very serious looking, very tough, mm -hmm. and you you all look like you know, बहुत पहाड़ टूट पड़ा है, कुछ होने वाला है, कुछ बड़ा. What happens in these meetings? Uh, you know, we saw that Uri, Balakot, Pulwama, uh, Ganga, Operation Ganga. Um, we saw this with during COVID times. With how do these meetings takes take place? What happens? Does everybody import output? What happens there? No, it would vary. You see, uh, uh, if there's a larger meeting, usually there would be some kind of briefer. Hmm. Uh, in any meeting because somebody has to put the proposition uh, and then uh, you know hmm. ob obviously then uh, the the uh, floor kind of gets opened up uh, typically uh, the prime minister comes in sort of uh, uh, late i would say i mean he allows people hmm. uh, to to speak before he actually uh, says anything that would be a a, a norm uh we may look very serious because usually when ccs meets it's a serious matter hmm. you know uh the uh, the routine ccs meeting we have you know wa yeah, wa sure. uh, if there is some uh, something which uh, some agreement or uh, purchase or something needs to be cleared often you don't get the photo of it because you yeah, you, you yourself yeah. would not be yeah. uh, covering it so uh, you would not most of the pictures you do have would be of Uh, occasions like uri or post galwan uh, you know where where the situation is serious and i think it's obviously reflected on yeah. our on because our, there's no briefing after uh, the ccs uh, we never get to know what happened yes but you look uh, i i think uh, governments at the end of the day are supposed to focus on governance mm. so so if you if you have i mean if there are decisions you made which need to be executed you're not going to come and tell the press guys we just made this decision and that is how it is yeah. going to be executed okay so now uh, let me come to uh, you know when we were talking about how you do your briefings to the prime minister you do your briefings to the cabinet um what happens when you're at, with parliamentary uh, committees there is the opposition also out there Par parliament or in parliament but the parliamentary committees there are opposition members also right the parliamentary committee on foreign affairs oh okay consultative committee consultative committee yeah, sure, sure. right so there are there are people from the opposition also in that sure. so how how do you how do you convince them about policy matters well i i you know uh, i have uh, only experience uh, of my own committee because uh, both uh, as foreign secretary and as em i've dealt with them uh, the way i deal with them is uh, we take a subject uh, we tell them this is the subject normally we take something very topical uh, and then we would have uh, again a presenter uh, often it would be the foreign secretary could be some other secretary normally not then i open it and uh, uh encourage everybody to to have their say and then what would happen is in some cases the presenter may respond but i would as a minister uh, sort of uh, uh, uh respond to every one of the comments uh, which are made by every one of the members uh, 
Okay. Uh, so my intent of doing that is really one to underline to them that we take them seriously uh, to not them seriously but their concerns seriously mm. uh, to it does help in in kind of carrying them along and uh, sometimes in convincing them though politics is politics so sometimes whether they're convinced or not they would not they admit could, it uh, uh, rahul gandhi didn't get convinced by you he in fact he said that uh, i think you were he i don't know the exact words but i think he said that you did not uh, know much about foreign policy matters you needed to learn a little more uh well let me let me put it to you more accurately this wasn't at a parliamentary committee hmm. uh abit in parliamentary committees we have interacted but usually what happens in parliamentary committee i try to keep to myself so i will not get into it with you either uh, this i think was something he said at some kind of public meeting hmm. somewhere it was that you don't know much about i think he uh, look i i cannot vouch for the exact words either but uh, i think it was probably in the context of china hmm. if china. i remember right yeah he's not convinced uh, about china yeah, that but you know i mean he thinks that you are what, opaque about it uh, uh, i don't know whether it's opaque or whether Uh, you know uh, there was a sort of a level of knowledge understanding i mean all i can say in my defenses i have been the longest serving ambassador in china i have been uh, dealing with a lot of these border issues for a very very long time mm. uh, i uh, uh, i would say uh, re- re- let me put it to you this way i'm not suggesting i'm the necessarily the most knowledgeable person but i would uh, have a fairly good self opinion of my understanding of what is out there okay but you know i'm i mean if he has uh, superior knowledge wisdom i'm all as i said for me life is a learning process superior knowledge wisdom on china if he has i'm always willing to listen okay and learn from mr rahul gandhi on china if you think that that's a possibility uh, i okay. have never closed my mind to anything however improbable it is <laughs> okay yeah. all right um four years as foreign uh, minister of india and ninth year of the modi foreign policy mm-hmm. uh, what is the report card like i think it's a it's a very solid report card uh number one it's a re- if you look today at our global standing which is a very intangible measure of success but it's a very visible measure of success you know you you ask yourself uh, 2023 you know when a prime minister of india in this case narendra modi you know convenes a meeting walks up on a global stage how or a conference or how do people react what compare it with even with him 5 years ago hmm. uh, perhaps with his predecessors many of them i would say today our global standing uh, is clearly very much higher mm. is is uh, uh, quite good quite strong uh, number 2 uh, uh, strategically uh, i think there is today much greater clarity in our own thinking and in our own operations and i say that as an implementer of foreign policy that you know uh, people know there's a neighborhood first neighborhood first means build your connectivity and your contacts and this is your first priority then they know there's an extended neighborhood to the west towards the gulf to the east asean to the south sagar central asia there's set of policies which do that then they know there's a policy of engaging the major powers uh, they know there's a africa focus so there is today a lot of uh, strategic Uh, clarity about our strategy and that's necessary if you are serious about operationalizing it third in terms of operationalizing it you, you know uh, we we do today projects uh, in in almost 80 countries in the world it's you know most indians don't realize how much we do abroad uh, today and those are often the test of our credibility and there's been a huge improvement there that projects which would often lie for years mm. uh, you know unfinished Uh, struggling for something the the uh, efficiency of that uh, has improved uh, on big global issues today uh, uh, i think uh, uh, the expectation is that uh, india would have a say they would uh, have a voice they would have a opinion uh, and they would 
uh, if necessary, uh, you know, uh, have more than that. Uh, and this could be climate change, it could be counterterrorism, it could be black money. I mean, you look at the at the big, it could be something like maritime security. Uh, even 